We started in September. 11 months, 118 games, and 385 goals later, here we are. The spendthrift versus the frugal. The seasoned campaigner up against the rookie. The German powerhouse will go up against the French giants. Bayern Munich versus PSG. Bayern Munich has been to 11 Champions League finals. They've won only four. Now I'll begin this episode by discussing their team and their, their chances of winning this year Champions League. They have the X factor in Robert Lewandowski. But what we also need to bear in mind that Lewandowski is not the only one. They have goals coming from different aspects of the field. Serge Gnabry, he scored a brace in the semi-final and Thomas Muller, he got a brace in the quarter-final. So the goals are distributed across each of that front three or front four, if, I, if, I, if I'm to be honest. And as a result, it makes it extremely difficult for teams to cope with them. Because if you place your attention on one particular player, then it is distributed to another one who is capable of finishing. They are extremely resolute. We've known German teams to be workhorses. They, they've always been hard-running teams, they get the work done. They, they don't necessarily possess lots of superstars, quote unquote, but what they do is they put in the extra work in different aspects of the field. And as a result, the, there isn't a need for a superstar in the end. Bayern Munich is somewhat a, a replica of this. They basically mimic the German national teams. And each year that we see the German national team, it, it is a, a replica of the Bayern Munich team that we've been watching throughout the season. Now, going into this Champions League final, I'm expecting somewhat of the same. We've been seeing it throughout the season so far. And as a, as a result, they've won everything there is to win in Germany. And in, and in addition to that, they've scored 42 goals in this year's Champions League, albeit from only 10 games. So that's the second highest only to Barcelona 1999 season, where they scored 95 goals oh. from six more games. They have the best striker in Europe at this point in Robert Lewandowski and he will be looking to get on the score sheet once more. It is a major final and I'm pretty sure the defenders from PSG will have their work cut out for them on the day. Bayern Munich will be going up against Paris Saint-Germain, the French giants. Now PSG has two of the most promising players that there is in football. Neymar, he's now 27 years old, so I won't. The, the promise is somewhat overdue now. He's won the Champions League before with Barcelona, and since leaving Barcelona, this is the first Champions League final that he's been to. So um, there was a lot of speculation when he left that he was killing his career by going to France, which I think it was a step downward personally. I think he didn't develop as much as we the fans would have loved to see him. He was too relaxed in, in Paris and the competition there isn't as strong and as such, he, he's not challenged week in, week out. Neymar's compatriot, Kylian Mbappe, he won the World Cup two years ago with the France national team at 19. And now at 21 years old, he is looking to add to that trophy hall. Now, Kylian Mbappe is definitely the one to succeed Cristiano Ronaldo and, and Lionel Messi at the top of football and we we know that he can deliver on the big stage as we saw in the World Cup final. It is just a question of is he fully fit? He was coming into that semi-final game with a knock and we, we saw him create a bunch of openings and, and in, in the end he didn't get on the score sheet but he, his teammates stepped up and, and they, they propelled them through to the next round. So Angel Di Maria, he's also in somewhat of a purple patch. He's been scoring goals for fun. But we need to bear in mind that neither Mbappe nor Neymar have scored in the past two games. And that is cause for concern for the PSG fans because Marquinhos was the one who stepped up in the semi-final and he stepped up as well in the quarter-final. So they're going to need these two players to be at the top of their game and getting on the score sheet because only then do I see them getting past an extremely resolute Bayern Munich team. Bayern Munich plays an extremely high line and as a result, if you can find that cutting edge pass to split that defense open, then you can get Kylian Mbappe running in behind because Jerome Boateng and Alaba, they don't have the recovery speed to catch up with a Kylian Mbappe. So it should be quite interesting to see how 
the Bayern Munich coach addresses that because they definitely need to, to, to make some adjustments going into the game because PSG has extremely speedy players who can hurt them if given the opportunity. We saw in that Lyon game where Lyon got two clear-cut chances in the first half of the game and had they put those chances away, then it, it would have been a, a more interesting encounter. Earlier in the season as well, we saw Bayern Munich against Olympiacos. One of the legs ended, I think, three goals to two. And in that game, it's the same high line that they played and Olympiacos made them pay. But in the end, Bayern Munich had more quality players and they were successful as a result. So we need to keep an eye on, on that aspect of the game. Also, we need to keep an eye on the matchups. Kylian Mbappe will be going up against Alfonso Davis, who is now touted as the the best left back in the world. Uh, I, I've seen quite a lot of him, but I don't think I, I'm ready to give him that, that honor as yet. But what I can say, he's an extremely good player and he has great things ahead of him. Considering Bayern Munich only got him for 10 million pounds, it's really a steal. So Alphonse Davis against Kylian Mbappe, there will be breathtaking speed in that one. And I think Usain Bolt will be watching from home and sweating as his record will, will definitely be in jeopardy. <laughs> um, we, we also need to look at Thiago versus Robert Lewandowski. Thiago recently touted to, to be joining Chelsea at the end of the season. He's now 35 years old and he's deemed with the task of marking Europe's most prolific striker. That in and of itself is a matchup to be paying keen attention to. Both midfields get the job done rather than being exceptional on the ball. And the defenders, I think it's much of the same, albeit I think Bayern Munich's defense unit is, is a tad more experienced than that of PSG. So overall, I think Bayern Munich will be the favorites going into this one and they are my pick to be victorious. However, I think PSG has a really good chance of winning their first UEFA Champions League trophy. Overall, I think it will be a really intriguing matchup, but I think Bayern Munich will be victorious because they operate more as a team rather than focusing on individuals. I think PSG's team, they rely too heavily on Kylian Mbappe and Neymar. And although Di Maria has been stepping up off late, much attention doesn't need to be paid to him because if they cut the service to Angel Di Maria from Neymar or even cut off the runs from Kylian Mbappe, then PSG will definitely be in trouble. But all in all, PSG has a really good chance at winning their maiden UEFA Champions League trophy this year. Because as I said before, Bayern Munich will give them opportunities. So if they can convert those opportunities from the early parts of the game, then they should put themselves in a poor position to, to, to go on to become victors. So expecting Bayern Munich to come away victorious but PSG will put in a really valiant effort and it will be a close game. It will be a high scoring, extremely close Champions League final, mark my word. Until next time, thanks for tuning in to Halftime TV.